Ivan Perisic to Manchester United was a transfer rumour that started a long time ago and was fuel when Jose Mourinho was spotted in Croatia with Perisic's representative watching them play during the international break. Now, Man United had been locked in long negotiations with Inter Milan. Inter Milan wanted 50 million euros for Perisic, a price which many considered to be a lot for a 28-year-old. Man United wanted to pay 35 million, but neither club was willing to budge. The 30th of June was considered D-Day as far as the Perisic to Manchester United transfer was concerned because this is the day where Inter Milan had to pay FFP 30 million euros because they were fined back in 2015 for breaching FFP rules. And in order to balance the books and to keep up with the sanctions that FFP had put on them, they needed to raise 30 million by the 30th of June. Now Man United wanted that 30 million to come from the Perisic sale. That's exactly why we were holding firm with our bid of 35 million euros. But Inter Milan knew that if they could raise 30 million by the 30th of June, they didn't have to sell Perisic. And it looks like they have done that. What I'm going to do is explain to you how it looks like Inter Milan have raised that money without selling Perisic and why this Perisic to Manchester United move looks dead. Now, Inter Milan have been able to buy Milan Skriniar from Sampdoria for a fee in the region of 20 million euros. And they've been able to sell Gianluca Caprari for 15 million euros. But the interesting thing here is they've been very shrewd with their numbers. Now, with this new signing in Skriniar, they put him down as a 2017-18 signing. But with the Caprari sale, they put him down as a 2016-17 season sale. So according to last year's accounts, which is what FFP are looking at, it's a 15 million profit because only Caprari is on there. The Skriniar transfer is going to go on next year's books. Now all of this is explained in detail by Sport Witness, which is a fantastic website that looks into European transfers. So we're looking at this at the moment, but it's also being replicated by Football Italia, who go into a little bit more detail about where the other 15 million euros is coming from. And this is what they had to say. By today, other sales will raise the full 30 million euros, including Eva Benega to Sevilla for 9 million euros, Federico De Marco to FC Sion for 4 million euros with a buyback clause, Senna Miangi to Cagliari for 3.5 million euros with a buyback clause, and Fabio Eguelfi to Atalanta and Andrew Gravillon to Benefento for 1.5 million euros. Yes, I know this is very confusing, so I'm trying to be as straightforward with the facts as possible. But the only thing you've really got to take from this is that Inter Milan have managed to raise that 30 million euros without selling Ivan Perisic to Manchester United. It was a stalemate between Ed Woodward and whoever Inter Milan's chief executive officer is. Because Woodward was refusing to raise his 35 million euro bid to 50, which is what Inter Milan wanted. And Inter Milan were refusing to budge on that 50 and accept Man United's 35 million knowing that this deadline was coming up. Man United basically backed into Milan into a corner and said, if you're not going to accept 35 million, you better make sure that you raise your 30 million by the junior 30th. That's your challenge. And Inter Milan did that. So fair play to Inter Milan for achieving that. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm very happy that Ed Woodward stayed firm in this situation. Because if Man United had been mugged off and paid 50 million for a 28-year-old, who, let's be honest, he probably wasn't, I say probably wasn't, he wasn't worth 50 million euros. Every other negotiation that we would have been in for the rest of the summer, every other club would have used that as a precedent, said, well, you paid them 50 million for a 28-year-old, you can pay 100 million for our 23-year-old now, or our striker or defender, whoever it is. It would have made Man United weak in negotiations moving forward. And I think Perisic is a transfer that wasn't absolutely vital for next season. I think We've been linked with Bernadeschi. That might be another way that we can go in and get a left winger type signing. But I think the key signings are a striker, Morata, central midfielder, Fabinho or Matic, or hopefully both, but probably not now, and a centre-back in Lindelof. They were the key signings. We've got Lindelof. We're stuck in negotiations. Don't know what's going on in the midfield, and Morata one is dragging out. But this left wing one, it wasn't absolutely crucial. And I think that's why Man United played hardball. If Perisic was crucial... I think we would have paid the 50 million. But we didn't. Inter Milan raised the money, Man United stayed firm, and we didn't get the man. Now, it's not the end of the world, 
The transfer window isn't even officially opened yet, people. There is plenty of time, over two months left for Man United to sign a left winger. But who is the alternative that we should be looking at now that Perisic looks like he's staying at Inter Milan? Does anybody you think we should be looking at? Let me know in the comments below. And maybe we can do a video on them. But that is it for today's video. It's just an update on the Perisic situation. I hope it helped you understand just how they've raised that 30 million euros and how they've managed to hold on to Perisic without selling to Man United and meeting FFP's requirements. So drop a like on the video as always, ladies and gents. Subscribe to United People's TV down there. No, down there somewhere. Who knows? Just down there somewhere. If you're new, we'll see you soon. Take it easy.